Hey everyone, welcome to Empower Team Monday Night Call. I am Natalie and I am so excited to share with you guys something that's been um, really heavily on my mind and on my heart, um, something that I've overcome recently and a system that I've created to help you guys um, create content with more clarity, um, with more confidence um, and less stress. Uh, I want to make this more doable for you guys. And so I sat down and thought about really what helped me. Um, so I, um, the title of this um, training tonight is how to create content and overcome writer's block. So for, um, for a little bit there, I was saying to myself that I had writer's block and I was really struggling to uh, come up with content that I felt like was at, could add value. I found myself in perfectionism of, of not, um, not knowing what to share and wanting it to be at a certain level that it's kept me in this constant state of being stuck. Um, I was overthinking. I, and because I was overthinking, I was underperforming. Um, and I, um, and I stumbled upon something that helped me, um, get over this writer's block hump. So just put a one in the chat. If you have ever had writer's block, if you, um, if you've just, you, it's been, it came time to do your IPA and you're like, uh, dang it. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what's getting in the way. I don't like, and you start telling yourself all these lies. I don't have anything to say. My life is boring. I don't know. Like I've already talked about that. Nobody cares. Like it, this is very real. Um, and I've been experiencing it on and off for the entire seven years of my business. So I'm like, how can we overcome this? And I just, um, I wanted to touch on some of this. So yeah. The root of writer's block is stress and self-neglect. Okay. Um, step one of creating inspired, captivating, and quality content is self-care. Living life in task mode and self-preservation will inhibit your creativity. And in this business, we are creators. That's what we do. We're creating content. We're creating posts. We're creating stories. We're creating a team. We're creating systems. We are creating um, our just, we're creators. Okay. And so we have to look at this through the lens of creativity and what inhibits creativity and what makes, what makes creativity flow. So, um, in order for creativity to flow, you need to create margin and become present, enjoy little moments and bigger chunks of your day. So you have, you cannot, you can't neglect this. Maybe you can for a day, maybe you can for a week, but eventually all the self neglect will catch up and you will be like, I don't know what to talk about. You don't know what to talk about because you are so disconnected with your own self. And if you're disconnected with you, there's nothing to flow out of. Okay. So um, I had some really consuming life events, just even uh, within the past couple months, I had some consuming life events take over my ability to create that took over my mind. Um, I was living in stress and self-preservation and task mode. Um, and so I had the opportunity to have several days of just leaning in like where I kind of took off a little bit. Um, I went, I, I, I've talked about this. I went, um, I went on a trip with Megan um, and we went hiking and we were in the mountains and we were outside and we were enjoying and we were shopping and we were, it was all just for the, just for enjoyment, just for connecting, just for, um, refilling. And what I found was when I, um, 
when I got outside, when I slowed down, when I got present in really small moments, like observing, observing a flower, you know, looking at a little mushroom growing and taking it in, um, just getting super present in small moments. Um, when I did that, I found that these moments really filled my cup and some other people, um, some, a way you can do it, even if you can't get outside, it's a rainy day. You can still meditate. You can look at your own hand and you can observe all the little lines, the calluses. You can like, look at, you know, when's the last time you just observed something so small, like what's going on on my hand here? Any, you can do it anywhere. Okay. And those moments of being present help you to reconnect with yourself. Um, and so I did that and it really filled my cup on a level that I wasn't anticipating. And it turned out to be the most productive thing that I actually could have been doing for my business. So you can't waste your time trying to squeeze the juice out of a dried up fruit. You must take that time to grow a fresh piece of fruit. Okay. So that's what I see people doing. Just like, there's nothing left to get out of this, like grow a new piece of fruit. Okay. That's where the juice is. And so we feel like, okay, I'm going to just keep squeezing. I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to keep pounding away. I'm going to keep doing all these things. It is productive to rest. It is productive just to enjoy life for the sake of enjoying your life. Okay. Um, so when I went through that experience, when I slowed down, when I quieted my mind, I didn't have a podcast going constantly. I didn't have music going constantly. Guess what happened? I suddenly started having new ideas. I suddenly had things to go live in the team page about. I started remembering what fuels me. I felt more motivated, clear, and most importantly, capable of doing the work needed to thrive. My doubt and my fear started to shrink all because I prioritized the time to reconnect with myself just for the sake of refilling. Okay, so I want you to remember that. I want you to ask yourself, put in the chat, is or do you feel like you're spending an adequate amount of time resting and refilling and enjoying for the sake of enjoying? Like if you, if you feel like you're doing that, put that in the chat. And if not put like new goal. <laughs> okay. Um, Cause rest is productive. And Natalie was right. I saw that pop pop up like, um, if God rested, so do we. Okay. Um, nothing good, nothing super fruitful comes out of burnout. So, all right. So that's, that's the why behind all of this. Okay. That's the why here's the strategy. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys, um, saw, um, the, the graphic that I created, um, I popped it in the team chat and in the comments of the, the, um, this call, the announcement of this call or whatever. Um, but I, I'm going to just go ahead and, and pull it up really quick. Wait, actually, I'm going to pull it up at the end. Okay. So here's the strategy. Um, wait, no. I am going to pull it up. Oh, uh, here we go. Share. Okay. So let's see. Can you guys see this? Let me try to make it bigger. I might not be able to make it bigger. Um, Okay, here we go. So I made this and um, this is something that you can print out. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, so this is something that you can print out. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about your content pillars. 
Um, and so I made five pillars here for, um, for everybody to be able to fill out at the beginning of the month of where you need to focus in. Okay. Um, so I just wanted you guys to be able to see this really quick. Um, I'm going to stop share. Wait. Um, bear with me. Stop share. There we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So here's the strategy part of this call. Um, consistently creating content requires planning, right? So if you take this seriously, you'll attract the right people to you. You'll attract your people. Um, you don't have to have this like super, um, like interesting life. You have to add value and share your values. Um, and so if we take a little time to plan it out and know the direction we're heading, then you'll be able to effectively do it without stress and wasting time and overthinking and getting into this, um, this paralysis, right? Um, so between adding value, um, sharing recommendations, sharing your values, and sharing your personal growth process, the right people will come. And so what I see a lot of people not doing as far as attracting business builders is not sharing your personal growth process. So when you, the, one of the best ways that you can attract business builders within your content is sharing your personal growth process. It's talking about our book club. It's talking about, it's taking a quote out of the book and saying, hey, this quote in this book is really amazing and here's how I'm applying it to my life. Um, it's saying, hey, here's a habit that I'm implementing um, because I, I want to grow in this area. You start doing that. I remember years and years ago, I would share I would share things about my personal growth process. And I remember Holly commenting on my on my stuff like years before she ever joined me. Like I would share John Maxwell quotes and Holly would be like, this is so great. And that was years of de making deposits before Holly ever even joined me. And I was like, man, it would be really cool if she joined me one day. But I enjoyed adding value to her either way she had screenshots. <laughs> I enjoyed adding value either way whether or not she ever joined me. Cause that's, that's the beauty of what we do. Like we get to, we get to add value. Okay. Um, and so, uh, there's that. So, um, I put in, in the, um, the graphic that I made for y'all to be able to print out. Um, I have the five pillars. One of the pillars has got to be health. Okay. It is, it's going through and writing down all, all the things that you really want to talk about in regards to health. Remember, first of all, that um, facts tell, stories sell. So you need to have a, like a 75% to 25% um, stories, stories to facts ratio, I would say, in my opinion. Do other ratios work? Could you do 50-50 and be good? Probably but I prefer to do 75, 25 as far as facts and stories. So when with your health pillar, talk about your story. So something that I, you know, I, I see some other people on this team, you know, Plexus really helped them with anxiety. And so they talk about that a lot. For me, I talk about how Plexus really helped me with my hormones. I love talking about hormones. I love talking about how this can help balance your hormones. I love talking about gut health because Plexus really helped me with my gut health. Um, so there are things that I specifically, like this month, I'm going to be intentional to talk about how, you know, share this aspect of my health. So I'm putting share a gut health te personal testimony. I'm putting share a hypoglycemia personal testimony. We can write out these big, long testimonies, but we can also break it down into little chunks and extrapolate on what you have to offer. And then you, you, um, 
you can go in and break it down and create so much more content out of your story by focusing in on one thing instead of glossing over a list of 10 things. Both are good. And you should be sharing your health testimony monthly at minimum. You need to be rewriting your story every single month. For you, you've written, for us, it feels like, oh, I've said this so many times, doesn't matter. People are not reading it as much as you think they are. Maybe your mom is. Oh, well, your mom's going to live. Your mom probably loves it. Okay. She probably loves reading it every time. I know my mom does. <laughs> so, uh, you know, break it down and rewrite your story. Okay. So that goes in the health. For me, in my health category, I share about my workouts. I want people to know that I'm congruent. I, I don't just take healthy supplements. I also really care for my body in the health category. I'm also, you know, like I could post about a healthy snack that I found for my kids. I can post about some other, other health related things that I do. Maybe I found a healthy restaurant in town. Okay. So really break, break down what you want to talk about. Maybe probile five is your favorite, um, is your favorite product. And you want to highlight that. And you want to talk about why ProBio 5 is different and unique. So plan that out for your in within that pillar. In your next pillar, I put personal growth process. You got to be, if you want to attract business builders, like, like I did with all of my business builders, <laughs> you have to talk about your personal growth process. Because once you start doing this, you stepped into personal growth with a compensation plan. That's our job. It's actually what we do. And if you're failing to talk about your personal growth, you are missing out on, on the people, on your people who want to grow and do this with you and will respect you as a leader who's engaging in a process. It demonstrates courage. Sharing your process vulner vulnerably demonstrates courage. And when you demonstrate courage, people will be drawn into you. Um, so sharing that. And like I already said, habits, books, you're reading podcasts, you're reading lessons, you're learning mistakes. You made failures that you are addressing in addition to victories. Okay. The third category that I think needs to be in, um, in one of your five pillars is recommendations. So that month you need to go and you need to say, what do I have to recommend? Okay. Maybe I want to talk about my favorite chapstick. Maybe I want to talk about the restaurant that I went to that I really loved and why. Maybe I want to recommend going on a, a where you can go on a date night. You know, maybe I want to recommend where I, where you can take your kids for some quality time, you know, um, Making those recommendations, you have to recommend other things other than Plexus. You cannot make yourself one big Plexus commercial. You have to say, I found this new, there's a new sale. I just posted about this new necklace that I got. I was like, you guys, like I found this company. There's tarnished free jewelry. Look at how cute this necklace is. I'll tag them, go to their site. You have to do that. So go through and write things that you're going to recommend to people. Okay. And that can also include podcasts, books, and so forth. Um, so that's very important. Um, and then for me, my other two pillars, um, I, I talk about healing. I talk about faith. And so healing and faith, my faith is, is largely a part of one pillar. I could also call it faith slash hope slash healing. Um, but I'm going to, it's me. That's who I am. I'm going to share hope. I'm going to share hope with people. I'm going to share healing with people, how people can heal, how I've healed. And I'm going to share my faith because that's, that's who I am. That's a part of my identity. And then my last pillar is family. I'm going to share about, I'm going to share about what I'm learning with my family. I'm going to be sharing about, um, a, a, you know, um, something that I am learning from parenthood, something that I'm learning about 
raising a teenager or something that worked for me. Like, Hey, I spent some quality time. Have you figured out your kids love languages? You know, things like that. Like I'm going to go through and think about what can I share in regards to my family? And I'm going to write down um, love languages. I'm going to take the time to just think about it. It's all here. If you're intentional to take the time to write it out. So that's my pillar. Maybe for you, you're a big foodie and you love cooking. And that's one of your things you share your recipes. Like to maybe you're like Tova and you do that and you share your meal planning, you share your recipes, you're doing that. Maybe you're into organization. That's maybe you're like Sabrina and you like to build things and you're sharing that. And you're, you're, you're inspiring people to do that. Maybe you're like Courtney and you're, you love cleaning your house and you should, that's one of your pillars. And so you share your tips, you share your favorite things, like figure out who you are or what you value. And those are your, those are your other p pillars and you implement that and you stay consistent and true to that. Your people will rise up to the top. Um, so yeah. That is what I got. Also at the bottom of the PDF or the graphic, whatever, it has, you know, space for you to brainstorm extra ideas for you to plan, for you to make a plan, for you to say, hey, you know, here's what I want to talk about in my stories. A lot of the time what I'll do when I make a post, I'll make a post and then I'll also go in my stories and I'll talk about it. And I'll be like, hey, I just made a post on, um, I did this the other day with something. Oh yeah. I, I, I was feeling mom guilt. This is just a quick example. I'll get you. I was feeling mom guilt about, um, not making the summer fun enough and however. And then I was thinking, man, I feel this every summer. I always feel that pressure. I'm going to go. And then, you know, I, I, process through all of that. I went and I made a post about it. I created a plan for how I'm, for what I'm going to handle. So I'm adding value. I'm like, here's my plan for how I'm going to handle this summer mom guilt thing that I'm experiencing. I made that post, I posted it. And then I went into my stories and I said, you guys, I connected. So I wrote and I talked. And so that draws more people in. And I said, you guys, I feel this. And I said, just what I said. I'm like, you guys go read my post. I shared in there my plan for how I'm going to like get ahead of this mom guilt because I'm tired of feeling like this every month. And I know I'm not alone. Your people want to know they're not alone. Your people want to be able to relate to you. You know, the people, the people that are meant to be on your team and the people who are meant to take your products, they're going to relate to you. So those, um, I like to, I like to both write and talk about it. So that's always, that always helps me with, you know, showing my place face, um, in that bottom section, write some things out that you can share, um, on your stories too, because you need to be showing your face on your stories daily, um, almost daily saying something, let people hear your voice, let people fate, you know, um, you know, uh, like FaceTime with you, but not actually FaceTime with you, you know, let them feel like they're your friend that you, that are intimately in their lives. And that, that will, that will cultivate the like, no trust factor and people, um, people will be really blessed by you and eventually join you. So thank you guys so much. And I will catch you guys on the pink power Monday night call after this. Y'all have a good night.